People who work at wedding venues, what's the most disastrous wedding you've seen? Once I saw the entire bridal party, bride and groom included, being forcibly removed by police officers just minutes before the reception was about to start. They got crap faced and insisted they were allowed to freely roam the historical, state funded, highly protected building next door to the reception hall. Employees did all they could to quietly usher them back but they started swinging and the cops had to be called. That would make for some awesome candid reception photos. 20 years later, they'll be showing these to their kids, and here's where we all got arrested for trespassing, drunk and disorderly, and assault. Welp, I'll toss this one in. I worked a wedding as a planner's assistant when I was about 18. I did whatever I was asked, but for the most part it was final touches on setup, organizing the bridal party, queuing music and stuff. Anyway, one wedding starts off normal enough, it's huge and being held in a university chapel, with a reception to follow outdoors next to a historic building on campus. The bride and groom each have 14 people in their bridal parties so already wrangling everyone is an issue. The day before the wedding we show up for rehearsal and set up what we can. It's a gorgeous June day, everything is fine. We manage to get everyone up and down the aisle in order. All good. Day of the wedding. Horrifying thunderstorms. Before the wedding even starts, the tent that had been set up the day before flooded. Whole place turned into a mudslide. Ceremony is gorgeous. Then everyone makes their way in torrential rain to the mud-filled tent from heck, where the water and mud is easily ankle-deep everywhere, sinking to calf-deep depending upon where you step. The bride's dress is absolutely ruined. Everyone is damp and covered with mud. The bride's mom looks like the matchmaker from Mulan. Somehow, the band is still there and willing to play, and the only dry place is the dance floor. So everyone is there and it's 900 degrees to go along with the torrential rain. The bride changes dresses and asserts that her cowboy boots are made for this crap so the wedding goes on. Everyone gets hammered. They all seem to somehow be having a good time. Meanwhile, the rain is steadily picking up, an epic storm is brewing, and the planner that I worked for was like okay time to piece the frick out, we pile into her car, everything is wet and terrible and I'm just thinking about getting home and showering and never seeing those lunatics without a rain contingency again, and, less than a mile from the wedding site, three separate funnel clouds form, touching the ground to become three. <laughs> That pretty much ended any and all festivities. Luckily, I'm pretty sure the bride and groom were just happy to be married to each other but holy crap did the weather have it the frick out for them. That sounds like a badass bride and wedding. The groom was rushing the celebrant because he only had to pay half price for his tux if he returned it by 4pm. The reception was a hot buffet. The guests all stuffed their faces and even their handbags with food and then fricked off. The ceremony and reception all took place in under 15 minutes, happiest day of their lives. The reception was a hot buffet, the guests all stuffed their faces and even their handbags with food and then fricked off. The ceremony and reception all took place in under 15 minutes. You just described my dream wedding. Alright, I've got a doozy but might be a bit late to the party. I used to bartend at a restaurant that did a lot of small functions like engagement parties and receptions. To set the scene, this was a fairly small affair, about 40-50 guests, some food platters and a shitload of booze. It was fairly uneventful for the most part, until the night was just about to wrap up, at about 1am. Everyone was pretty wasted and were partying hard. One of my colleagues informed me that someone was fricking in the disabled toilets. This has happened a few times at these types of events. And I rolled my eyes when I heard this, as it's not exactly the most private place to smash some drunken dandy. The disabled's toilets are essentially in between the men's and ladies, which means that the air vents basically broadcast the not exactly quiet couplings of wasted party goers. Another important note is that the door for this toilet is a sliding door with a latch, which is the possibility of being open enough for those wandering through to catch a glance if the door wasn't slid all the way closed. I did a glass collection run about 5 minutes later, and sure enough, the door wasn't really closed properly. What I saw through the crack of that infidelitous portal made me back away like Homer Simpson when he caught Apu. Clear as day, the groom had the maid of honor bent over and was absolutely going to town. 
I made my way back to the manager's office and looked him dead in the eye and said, crap's gonna get real bad in a minute. Confused, he followed me back out on the floor, and with impeccable timing, one of the party members was whispering in the bride's ear, he's freaking who she screamed. The bride's father overheard the exchange and ran to the toilets, dragging his brand new son-in-law directly onto the dance floor. The bride started crying hysterically as it was confirmed what had just happened, and she ran off into the night, trailed by her wedding party. Everyone else kind of milled about for 15 or so minutes, drained their drinks and filtered out themselves. We found the groom about 3 hours later as we were packing up the bar, head in the toilet, vomiting his guts out, a bottle of whiskey in one hand. I was waiting for the father of the bride started beating groom up on the dance floor. I didn't work at a venue but I did work for a dive rescue team. Wedding was on the side of the river. Father of the bride was not pleased with his new son-in-law. Fop went for a drunken walk along the river. We found him three days later downstream. Pretty sure that put a damper on the wedding. I too worked dive rescue. Never understood why it wasn't just called dive recovery. Crap was always dead. Nothing will wake your up faster than a dead bloated face in 3 feet of this at the bottom of a freaking lake. My first time I think I sucked half my tank down in 20 or 30 seconds. You never totally get used to that crap. Not disastrous, but definitely the most awkward. I bartended the wedding venue in town. Most the time it's simple and the people are ordinary. The last wedding of last year we worked was by far the weirdest group of people I had ever witnessed. Imagine a room full of 200 people that were probably outcasts in high school and had never been to a party before. They are all dressed to the nines, but with like canes and fedoras. And you can tell not a single one of these people can dance. At one point, there were four guys doing the worm. Four, and not even together. They were just in their own little group of people dancing, unaware that another three guys were also doing the worm. Okay, I cracked up reading this. That's such a great mental image. Videographer here. The bride was the product of an affair so her father's family and mother's family were always separated her entire life, until the wedding. It was very tense from the minute I arrived and culminated in one family member attacking another with a steak knife. Nothing brings family together like steak knife murder I guess. Not a disaster, but I worked at an Indian wedding of 1200 people. People showed up who weren't invited so we didn't have enough tables. Women changed their baby's diapers on the table and left them there. We ran out of plates, buffet style, because everyone took like 3 or 4 plates for themselves. It was crazy. This was actually my wedding. The, now ex, wife's family was a lot overbearing. My family is a lot racist. Best option available to us was to elope. We decide on a country with a scenic harbor front and plan a sunset wedding in the park. The photographer shows up and is a super friendly dude. Takes a ton of shots. We wrap up and the guests arrive. But only the guests. The officiant is a little late. Then, a lot late. No answer on her mobile. We all wait about 45 minutes or so with no response. Finally, we dispatch some guests to a church nearby to see if there's anyone there who might be able to fill in. On the way to the church, the search party sees a random well-dressed woman standing in a parking lot. Yep, it's our officiant, with her mobile phone sitting in the car showing a dozen missed calls. Whatever, they bring her down to the waterfront to perform the ceremony. Except sunset had long passed, and it's very dark. We had written our own ceremony, but there's not enough light for her to read it. No worries, she had 15 years experience doing this, just do your usual ceremony, then. Nope, she didn't even know a simple one, but one of our guests plus one was a huge fan of American greaser culture and had come to the wedding in jeans and a white t-shirt with a pack of smokes rolled up in his sleeve. With the ciggies came, a lighter, our wedding was literally saved by the fonds. He was promoted to the wedding party and lit up next to the officiant. Of course, holding a cigarette lighter while it's burning tends to get a bit hot, so we would have periodic breaks in the short ceremony where everyone was plunged into darkness for a few seconds while Fon switched hands. Since we were waterfront and had an open flame, we started to attract a cloud of bugs. 
Sensing a free wedding buffet, the bugs attracted bats. Giant freaking bats swooping down on the wedding party. We wrapped up quick and noped on out of there. The reception was a quick toast, followed by a seafood platter that was unfortunately too large to fit in anyone's refrigerator, resulting in the bride, and one assumes other guests, we didn't ask. Spending the entire wedding night locked in the bathroom while their insides fought to GTF fought to G and that photographer who took all those shots, I meant that literally, dude was drunk off his butt, but pretty good at hiding it, couldn't hide his work, though, we had 16 rolls of film, and got them developed back in the US, only one picture worked, the bride and I holding hands where only our hands were visible in the frame, every, single, other, short was either out of focus, had heads cut off, was only one of us or part of one of us and all of the other, or just our asses. It was amazing how the dude couldn't get more than one good photo out of hundreds of attempts. It was still better than dealing with our families. Sounds like some pretty hilarious memories if nothing else. Sad that it had to be your wedding, though. I work on the radio, years ago another guy I worked with used to DJ weddings on the side. I needed some cash and he wanted some time off so I sat in for him. The bride's dad had died a few months prior. Although her parents had been divorced she wasn't close to her stepfather. So her dad's brother was standing in for him. I got told about a half hour before she and her uncle were going to do their version of daddy daughter dance. They asked for me to come up with a song that wasn't about her dad. Wasn't a love song. I couldn't think of anything. Heck. I still can't think of something else that would be appropriate. I went with a song I hadn't seen the video to. Craig Morgan's Almost Home. Apparently the video was a guy committing suicide. The groom came up to complain shortly afterwards a little upset. As he'd seen the video. I asked him what song he'd rather me play. And he immediately cooled off. He realized I was in a tough position and didn't have a lot of options. The mother of the bride then got drunk and demanded the chicken dance. Why not isn't she lovely by Stevie Wonder. Was written as a song to his daughter. But the lyrics are really just about how great the girl is so works in all context. My mom's brother-in-law and cousin got in a crazy fist fight. Inted of my mom showing us a dress for great memories she can also show us cousin Mike's blood on the side of it. I hope you reuse the dress with bloodstains left intact. That would be a badass bride. Reception is all set up. Guests and groom have arrived, but the bride and her maids are missing. They appear about an hour later. Pee out of their goods. Reception commences. Bride continues drinking as though her life is ending. End of night about 2 in the morning. Guests have left and the families are cleaning up. The bride is sitting on a chair covered in her own vomit. Semi-conscious. And the mob turns to the groom and says cheerfully. You can take your bride home the groom says. No. In a tone so filled with disgust I wish I could have bottled it to sell to angry people. And left. It was awkward. Other favorites. Learned never to ask where the groom is. We were at the ceremony getting ready for the processional and usually the groom does not walk the bride down the aisle. Only to be told that the barely legal stud walking what looked to be his grandmother down the aisle was in fact the groom. Awkward again. There was the Russian H wedding as well. There was some confusion as the bride was wearing as my boss called it a pea shoot wedding gown. And people who were bringing their children in for theater school complained. So we had to move the wedding so people couldn't see the bride in all her glory. Awkward again. But perhaps my favorite was a result of the interaction between a bridesmaid and our security guard at the time. Bridesmaid walks and starts being exceptionally rude to the security guard. He hadn't said anything to her and apparently didn't know her. It wasn't until she passed him that he recognized her full back to two. He was in boss man. He could have fricked a headless corpse with abandon just as long as it had a nice butt. He had gotten her pregnant and disappeared when she asked for child support. Even more awkward. I'm so interested in the back to two bridesmaid and security guard. I worked a wedding once where the groom was Hindu and the bride was Catholic. For some reason, the couple decided to have roast beef on their menu. As we began to serve the beef, you could hear the Hindu side gasp in disbelief as we placed large platters of beef on their tables and they then yelled for us to remove them immediately. I guess the bride must have forgotten that she was marrying into a religion where cows are sacred. To make matters worse, as this was happening, the Catholic side began clinking their forks, 
A tradition that occurs to at some weddings and insinuates either the bride and groom or parents of the couple to kiss. This time it was meant for the parents of the groom who did not believe in showing public affection, especially in a room full of their relatives. Despite their hesitation, the clinking continued and got louder and louder until the poor parents had to very briefly and embarrassingly engage in a quick embrace in order to subdue the Catholic side of the family. Here's to hoping the rest of their lives did not clash as much as the two cultures did on this wedding day. I've said this before but I was handing food out a Taco Bell window and a car load of Indus pulled up. The guy marking the food messed up and put beef tacos in the bag when they ordered chicken. They were not pleased when they came back around to get the order corrected. Years ago, my wife designed planned a wedding for a huge wedding at the Four Seasons in Santa Barbara. Beautiful venue, huge guest list, and not many expenses were spared, especially the alcohol. Both families were big tequila drinkers, so instead of the champagne toast it was turned into a tequila toast, which then turned into more people making speeches toasts aka more shots. Needless to say, around an hour after the first toast, everyone was toasted. The groom starts fighting with his now brother-in-law and then a big drunk sloppy brawl commences in the front lawn at the dang four seasons. LOL. Stick to champagne for the toasts, folks. The mother-son dance went on for like 7 minutes and had 3 songs woven together. The mother had changed into a backless ballroom dance gown for this number and spent much of those 7 minutes shimmying up and down her newly married so. I guess this got her worked up enough to bang one of the caterers out in her car while the horse d'oeuvre were being passed out. That was classy. More like W d'oeuvre. A friend of mine from university was getting married. She was early 20s very pretty and an elegant. He was 30, high school dropout working as a carpenter. They met through their church and decided not to be alone together before marriage because of their strong religious beliefs. The groom seemed nice enough, but the bride was well educated and wanted adventure and travel. He didn't see the point of traveling and had no appetite for change or adventure. He had rented the house next door to his parents at 18 and been there since. In my honest opinion, she was so far out of his league that they were playing different sports. Her investment banker father felt the same. Because they didn't support the union, her parents refused to help pay for the wedding and the groom's parents refused because they were broke. And it was the bride's family's responsibility anyways. So off we go to the not going to be one of them fancy $5,000 weddings. Groom's words. The wedding was at a campground resort in the middle of nowhere. One hour outdoor ceremony at noon. Reception started at 5 p.m. Everyone in attendance ended up leaving the silent cocktail hour space with its one tray of fruit, one tray of veggies and various bottles of pop and water in favor of the bar. Each pair of parents sat in a different corner buying plates of appetizers for their friends and family. There was a bit of a ruckus when the groom's parents, who don't believe drinking is a sin, started ordering pitchers of beer. The bride's family, who do think drinking is a sin, took offense to this. I for one, sat back at a bar, cold beer in hand and watched the tensions and embarrassment rise. Highlights from the dinner reception. A girl at my table was uncomfortable with the fact that they had their first kiss in front of everyone. Kissing should be reserved for in private. The buffet ran out of food. The cake was too hot and melted collapsed in on itself. The father of the bride's speech basically amounted to we raised this amazing girl and kept her a virgin until tonight, someone please make her a better offer before she leaves with this man. Half the guests left after dinner because they did not realize there was a reception. The bride and groom did not dance or interact all night. The groom's grandmother stood at the back of the dance floor scowling and making comments about how people danced and what they were wearing. The bride and groom snuck off out the side door at 9pm and the DJ told the 10 of us that were left that he would play until 10, if we wanted. If shockingly, the groom decided that he did not like married life and just walked out within 2 years. Not sure if this counts since I wasn't an employee but the groom at the wedding. Our caterer was arrested while on his way to deliver the food to our reception. Apparently the driver our caterer used had a warrant for his arrest and the police pulled up next to him when he was coming to the reception hall. They obviously arrested him and seized the truck full of our delicious Mexican food, my choice of food for the wedding since my wife got to choose pretty much everything else. The owner found out while we were still at the ceremony and had to bail out the truck. 
He then showed up to the reception in his work t-shirt with a couple other employees he could scrounge up and they started cooking the food at the reception hall about 45 minutes after everyone had already arrived and was seated. Thankfully the owner was cool enough to try and make things work despite the setback and we chose a pretty easy food to make for our wedding. Tacos and enchiladas. We didn't learn until after the reception what had happened. We just thought it was a little odd the owner was there and not dressed up at all. But it was our wedding day so we didn't care much. Good on the owner for being so professional. Middle age couple. Second marriage for both of them. Daytime Sunday wedding at the very nice country club I worked at as a banquet waitress. They had picked out their menu months prior. But the day before the wedding the bride calls to say she's all of a sudden deathly allergic to gluten and needs special food, a special cake, etc. My managers are freaking out bc apparently this allergy is airborne and she will die if she is in the same room as gluten. They tell me this and I call bull, explaining what celiac disease actually is. They accommodate her as best they can anyways. We took allergies very seriously and never took a chance with anything. They brought their own decorations which consisted of rusting aluminum trash cans placed at the entrances with signs and little banners they spray painted saying leave your drama at the door. Throw it in the trash or drama free zone. A Halloween type skeleton bride and groom were hung up behind their table as well as a shrine to the bride sister who had died over 10 years before. I understand missing your sister, but setting up candles, a large photo, and taking up a decent amount of space in the function hall at your wedding for this is a tad odd. When they arrived, they were chain smoking cigarettes and blowing them right where I was standing. I was tasked with handing the bridal party hors d'oeuvres while they had their pictures taken. The bride made a big fuss where I had to put her drink on a separate tray from the beers everyone else including the groom were ordering. Which meant I had to take separate trips inside to the bar for each order because I was on my own. This wasn't even including running back and forth replenishing all the food they were eating off of the plate I had to hold. So, I get this lady her separate drink on a separate tray. She takes it, watches her husband drink his beer full of gluten, and proceeds to make out with his beer soaked lips. She did not enter anaphylactic shock like she said she would if she even smelled gluten. The reception was awkward as well. No one was dancing. It was super light out which was just weird for me only because all the receptions I worked happened when it was dark out. She had her gluten free cake covered by plastic wrap sitting right next to the wedding cake in case it was contaminated by gluten in the air. And in the end she didn't even eat it. This was just one of many very weird weddings. But definitely one of the ones that I remember the most vividly. Frick that bride. Using a real disease as an excuse because she wants special treatment. It understand it if maybe one of her guests were allergic or had celiac disease but that's clearly not the situation. I was a banquet manager at a country club almost 20 years ago. Bride and groom have cut the cake and are on the dance floor for their first dance when the bride's grandfather falls dead out of his chair. CPR and paramedics to follow but no use. The freaking DJ to the rescue. DJ totally takes the mic. Shows us what the difference is between a DJ and a MC. While paramedics are loading grandad and the gurney, DJ gathers the wedding party and leads them in a group prayer. Also my bartender was freaking the frick out cause he thought he may have overserved the grandad. This would make a great comedy film. It wasn't so much a disaster, but I worked a wedding where a bridesmaid and the father of the bride went into a staff washroom and had sex. Yes, his wife was with him at the wedding, and only the staff knew what happened. This happened to me recently, the wedding party had a load of alcohol they had provided and as bartenders it was our responsibility to make sure all of this was used. So we kept replenishing bottles of wine that were empty on tables during the wedding breakfast. Everything was going fine, until one table just kept needing more bottles, and whilst on our break, during the wedding speeches, my friend comes out of the loose saying a woman had come storming in and the bathroom was literally flooding with puke. We go upstairs and there was puke everywhere, and the wedding party were just leaving the speeches and wanted to come down the stairs, so I had to clean up the sick whilst the bride was stood in front of me apologizing, and the toilets were completely flooded so nobody could use them, and it still smells of sick after 3 weeks. My mum says lemon spirit kills the smell of vomit. I had to help throw one of the groomsmen out of the rehearsal dinner a couple weeks ago. 
Turns out he had gone into the bathroom and shot up heroin. The groom's dad found him naked in the stall beating on the wall. It took us an hour to get him out of the stall, through the restaurant kitchen, only way to avoid walking him through the dinner, and outside. I'm guessing he took his pants off to find a vein but I am not sure. For an hour he told us he was taking a crap as he shuffled around the stall acting like he was wiping his butt it was really bizarre. We did all this while hiding what was happening from the groom and bride. When we finally got him out of the bathroom the bride was also coming out of the ladies room. She saw him drenched in sweat and immediately broke down in tears. Another hour goes by outside while we wait for his mom to come pick him up. She gets there and we tell her to take him to rehab and make sure he doesn't show up to the wedding. The groom was crying the whole wedding it was terrible. That's soul crushing. If that was my mate who cut me up inside I wouldn't even know how to do the wedding. Was a waiter at a banquet hall to get through grad school. There were plenty of shit chow weddings. But there was one clear winner. Loser. First, the bride's mother told all of the staff to not come to the bride with any issues. But to the maid of honor. A totally normal and not uncommon request. She then continued on to tell us to not look at the bride or acknowledge her in any way or she'd complain to our boss. So big red flag. The couple was interracial, with the bride being South Asian and the groom being white. In whatever cultural tradition the bride's family was from, the last dance of the reception was significant, where the groom dances with the bride's entire family. From what I gathered, my apologies if this is a misinterpretation of your cultural tradition. However, the groom missed the dance because he was up drinking in the bridal suite of the hall with two of the bridesmaids. The bride had a fit and a public screaming match with the groom about how he disrespected her and how could he and her family hated him, etc. He shrugs it all off, mostly because he's drunk by now, and is like whatever, I don't care, and walks away with the best man. The bride now sits down in the hall and begins to sob. My boss calmly lets her know her whole rental has ended, and she needs to leave. She screams that she's not going anywhere until the groom comes back in to apologize. The groom on the other hand, is out with the best man smoking a joint on the front curb. My boss has officially had it with this wedding and calls one of his buddies in the local police department and tells him to both help him remove the bride and freak out the groom. Sure enough, the groom throws away the J the second he sees a cop and turns white as a sheet, and once the cop threatens to charge the bride with trespassing, she was happy to leave. All in all, we were there an extra hour trying to get these buttholes to leave. A few friends and I used to play in a wedding band on the side for extra money. During normal operating hours, this same group of friends and I were in a metalcore band. Anyway, we're hired for a shotgun wedding in a small hick town. The bridesmaids and groomsmen wore camouflage as part of their outfits. The bride's dress had light camo as well. In a ho, bride gave us a list of crappy pop country songs to cover. So, wedding is done and we're playing the reception. One of the songs she requested was Jason Aldean's song The Best Of Me which I thought was weird, considering it's clearly a breakup song. I guess it never dawned on her that it was a breakup song when her and her father were dancing to it. She waved her arms at me to stop singing. I didn't lol, and demanded that I play the song. She wanted. I showed her the set list to prove it to her, and she proceeded to sit on the ground and scream cry while telling everyone her wedding was ruined because of a breakup song she picked. Not soon after, she ran behind the stage and unplugged the bass player's amp and stormed off. We played the rest of our set to a fairly receptive crowd, said our goodbyes and went home. The next morning, she called demanding a full refund because we didn't play the music she wanted. Luckily, we signed a contract and ended up winning that argument. I'm pretty sure that was the last wedding I ever played. Maybe she was asking for best of you by Foo Fighters, which is also a weird choice. Obligatory not disastrous, but I worked for about a year at a cute 19th century greenhouse that had been converted into an events venue, and there was one really weird one. It's a fairly pricey place and booked up quick. So we didn't get a lot of last minute or casual weddings. This couple was a man probably in his mid 30s. Normal American guy really. And a girl who looked just barely over 20 and spoke German maybe. It was super weird because it seemed like all the people at the wedding were only his family except for the bride's sister. We also didn't have a good place for brides to get ready. Being a historic venue. So they almost always came with all their hair and makeup done. This girl, however 
did her makeup herself in the kitchen and arrived only about 10 minutes before the ceremony was supposed to start. Super bizarre and definitely something up with that couple. I was a waiter for a wedding venue I worked at in my town. So during the dinner, we used two serving spoons like tongs to serve the main courses because we were fancy. As one of my colleagues was serving the father of the bride, they lost control of the spoons and dropped the slab of meat onto his lap. The sheer terror that came upon my face when I saw it happen. What followed was a fist fight and the cops being called. What a wedding. Those spoons are such a dumb way to serve food. Takes forever. High risk of spills. A nightmare for the staff and your food gets cold. I'm not sure if this is the kind of story that you are looking for, but it's the one that still sticks with me all these years later. I worked at a smallish resort that had a golf course, a shooting range, horseback riding, a few small bed and breakfasts, and several yachts and fishing boats. Very expensive. I was interning for the summer. It was supposed to be an accounting position. But I asked too many questions and they quickly moved me to the sales department. I got the chance to plan huge, expensive parties and tbh it was a lot of fun spending other people's money. At the end of the summer, I had to write a paper about my internship in order to get credit. While googling the company, I came across several lawsuits. They were repossessing the fleet because the owner had never made a single payment on any of the boats. The bank was attempting to repossess the boats and suing for a whole list of things. It was pretty clear that the business was about to go under in a big way. I naively assumed that everyone knew about it but hadn't told me because I was the intern and it was none of my business. My last day on the job, we did a walk throughout the property with a future bride and groom. And the bride's father. The father confides in me that he's been saving for her wedding since she was a baby so that when the time came he wouldn't have to deny her anything. I think I remember him saying that he was a plumber. The bride chose her venue, booked the mansion on the property for the bridal party, picked an expensive menu for her 200 plus guests, and much, much more. The father proudly wrote out the 50% deposits to hold the date for the following September. It was for just over $40k. As soon as they left, I demanded to know if they were really going to deposit that check knowing that the business wouldn't exist by next September if the bank had their way. My manager had no idea about the lawsuits, but she also didn't care. She fully intended to get her commission. The bank took the resort and sold it at auction the following December. The new owners refused to honor the wedding contract, and the old owners no longer had the money to refund the deposit that was put down. I don't know where or if the couple actually had their wedding, but I'm still bitter that they knowingly stole that man's life savings. This is not disastrous. It is sad. Really sad. I've had crappy brides, but as for actual disasters this was probably the biggest one. I was working as a pastry chef at a country club at one point. Our menu is set options, but we can obviously make adjustments for allergies, dietary restrictions, act. Thing is, bride wasn't the brightest, and didn't inform us that her future in-laws and husband's family kept kosher. She apparently assumed she could just tell us day off, everything that was made that day minus the deserts and vegetarian kids option, which was mac and cheese, had bacon, prosciutto, shellfish and one of the main swordfish. We had to scramble to make 100-ish servings of mac and cheese just so these people could eat something. When we informed her, she threw a fit and demanded we cook something else. We literally had no other way of doing other food for her, as sourcing food for 100 plus people within an hour is impossible. Even if we had the time to cook something, she then sat in her bridal suite and sobbed for an hour about how we were mean. Next morning, she called to ask for her takeaway food figuring she could just have the entrees that weren't served. She then threw a fit and threatened to sue for stealing when we told her that was illegal and we got rid of them. At my sister's wedding, the photographer was constantly snapping photos of me instead of the bride and groom. To be fair, he did get a lot of nice photos of them, but I felt positively stalked. I was stepping behind people when I saw the lens coming my way, and he'd circle around so he could see me again. He didn't provide those photos in the photo pack, which makes me really wonder what he did with them. He sold them. The one way you are looking at the bride and groom with your antelope eyes melts my legs. Not serious. What's the most awkward wedding moment you've witnessed? We showed up to a wedding where the bride was not the girl everyone was expecting. 
turns out the couple had called it quits like two weeks before, but the groom was so cheap he did not want to lose all the money invested in the wedding reception, so he decided to ask one of his ex-girlfriends to marry him. The girl accepted. It was very awkward because everyone at the wedding was talking about it. An 8 year old kid got a hold of the mic during the open floor toasts and started singing the Star Spangled Banner. Slowly everyone stood to face a flag. There were no follow up speeches. There's never a wrong time to be a patriot. At my sister in law's, wife's sister, wedding. The best man got up for his toast and told everyone how miserable my sister-in-law had made the groom during a rough patch, and that he had told the groom to leave her multiple times, but I guess he didn't take my advice, so I'll learn to deal with it I guess. Don't say I didn't warn you, and sat down. Dead silence. Super freaking awkward. I worked in catering service at weddings for quite some time and the most awkward thing I've ever seen was probably when after first dance bride and groom invited their parents to dance too. Bride's father was on wheelchair and the song thief chosen for this dance was I am never gonna dance again and the father was just sitting there watching them dance. It was pretty brutal and I cringed hard. To be fair, the song is actually called careless whisper and is really, really not appropriate for a wedding anyway. What started off as toasts from friends quickly became a roast the newlyweds as the alcohol flowed, but in a mean way, not the funny way, really awkward. I'd just like to say John is a piece of crap and Mary is a total B, hahaha <laughs> JK guys, JK, to John and Mary. My own wedding, mother of the bride was a thundering B, everything, literally everything was about her. Example, on the afternoon of 9-11 she called to speak to my fiancé and I said words to the effects of I can't believe what happened today, I'm in shock, so many dead to which she replied yes well I have my own problems. At her grandchild's baptism the year before she asked to make a speech, didn't mention the baby once, but instead insulted the entire congregation for not respecting her enough and ignoring her issues. The baptism before she had droned on for half an hour about her bad back. My bride was determined she wouldn't hijack the speeches with her bulls. We had a cordless mic and the best man was primed to hide it from her the moment the official speeches were over. She was on antidepressants and god knows what else, and during the meal drank a lot of wine. We had chosen the venue because the food was absolutely stellar. 5 star chef. Totally organic vegetables and forest shot game. She announced loudly to the room I wouldn't feed it to a cat. The speeches happened and sure enough she wanted to rock the mic. The best man sleight of handed the mic and passed it to me under the tablecloth and then claimed he's lost it. Mother of the bride got up and started blundering around the room looking for it like King Kong looking for Feyrey. One of the bridesmaids subtly tried to block her path and she hissed get out of my way you freaking ba mild scuffle ensued and my bride ran into the toilets crying. The best man instructed the wedding guests that it was time to get up and mingle, whereupon the mother of the bride lay down on the floor in front of the top table howling and kicking her legs like a 3 year old. A kindly uncle sequestered her to another room and my new wife didn't see or speak to her again for 5 years. I went to a Klingon themed wedding. The whole thing was awkward, but the announcer forgetting the bride's name was probably the most awkward occurrence. Klingon names are hard. My first wedding. We thought it would be a good idea to have the ceremony outdoors in a gazebo. It was September, so we didn't think the weather would be an issue. However, it was 90 degrees and humid. My mother, who was standing up next to my father during the ceremony, fainted midway through the ceremony. After a short break to revive her, the ceremony started up again. Then my best man, younger brother, then walked out of the gazebo to throw up. Then came the reception. Since my new bride was Jewish, they had people sitting in a chair and lifted them up. Then came my father's turn. Dad was a big guy, over 250 pounds. One of the guys that helped to lift him had to sit down afterwards because he didn't feel well. He was then rushed to the hospital because he was having a heart attack. Your own red wedding. The worst I saw was when they went to light the unity candle or whatever you call it. The cellophane had been left on. The whole process ended up taking about 15 minutes. The minister got so flustered that afterwards he says something. And like this candle, your love will continue brining shitely luckily it was videotaped. Brine shite like a diamond. 
the groom said, no, never has some place gotten so awkward to be at so fast. One wedding I went to had a bride who was wheelchair bound. She wasn't completely paralyzed, but her legs were very weak and she never really walked. At the end of the ceremony, they thought it would be cute to have her walk, with assistance, to her decorated scooter 20 feet away. It could have been a sweet inspiring moment, but she was so strained and in so much pain that everyone was uncomfortable. It was dead silent except for the occasional scream she let out. You could have heard a pin drop and it lasted several minutes. Longest 20 feet ever. My stepdad's grandson got his 16 year old girlfriend pregnant, so they had a shotgun wedding. At being 16 and 18, neither had much money, so they had my stepdad rent out a building for both wedding and reception. The building is tiny, two bathrooms, kitchen, and some tables. Fast forward to wedding day, they taped up tablecloths as a room divider to separate ceremony and reception. The groom walks in from outside with his brothers. The bridesmaids come out of the bathroom one at a time, then the bride. Bride is pregnant, and about 6 months along, and her dress is tight. Ceremony starts, unity candles lit, bride vomits everywhere, before the kiss. A maid of honor pulls up part of her dress and wipes the bride's mouth, because that's what MOH do. S. Time for the big kiss. You may kiss the bridegroom says um, can we do this later? Bride cries. Reception time. Everyone sitting at the table eating catered KFC and drinking water out of plastic wine glasses that disassemble at the stem. A tablecloth barrier has been removed to open up the dance floor. Bride and groom start dancing, and her dress rips down the side. She cries, runs to the bathroom, and puts on her pajamas that she arrived in. Marriage lasted less than one year. TBH I kind of feel really bad for her. The groom who apparently loves singing, bit horrible with it, the guy can't carry a tune to save his life, was asked to sing a song, twice, without backup music, and we sat there looking at each other wondering if all that was a joke. I love technology, but not as much as you you see, but I still love technology, always and forever. At my cousin's wedding, immediately following the new husband saying I do her 5 year old stood up on a chair, threw his fist in the air and yelled kill the beast, dot. That is just awesome. The groom's parents stood up and said that they paid for everything and the bride's parents were mooches, and then the bride's parents threw a bunch of hundred dollar bills at them. Also, at my cousin's wedding the great uncle that had molested her dad tried to make a speech about how cute her dad was as a kid. It didn't go well. Someone took the mic and basically shooed him off stage while everyone was just shocked. I want to be indignant and ask who invited the known molester, but having grown up in a family that covered up and excused abuse without batting an eye I wish I was surprised. On my wedding day, I had family and friends take care of a number of details while I got my hair and nails done. I just left detailed notes as to how to do them. The flowers were delivered to the church and the note said that the mothers and grandmothers got the pink corsages. There were 5 corsages, 4 same size and 1 big one. They assumed the big one was the mother of the bride corsage and the other 4 were 4 mil. 2 grandmas and 1 great grandma. It wasn't. I didn't order one for great grandma. The big one was the cake topper. My mom walked down the aisle with the cake topper pinned to her dress. Out of all these stories this is the one that made me literally laugh out loud. It must have been a very large corsage. Went to a friend's wedding last week. The father of the groom's speech was breathtaking. His opening salvo was to describe the time the bride, who lives with the groom's parents on their farm, helped knacker a horse that had died in a storm. He then spent a bit longer than necessary talking about the fact that the married couple are second cousins. By marriage, but still. But he then essentially made fun of the fact that the bride was 6 months pregnant, saying they both agreed that they wanted to get married and have kids, but they forgot which one happens first which would be fine. But the bride's family were ultra religious, and seemed really unhappy he brought it up. This segued into a rather graphic story about horses giving birth. He went on for what felt like hours, but was probably 5 minutes. It was funny as heck, but I think the bridal party were a tad embarrassed by the end. I love inappropriate family members at formal events. 
At my aunt's wedding during her dance with her uncle who had brain cancer, her dad died long ago. His belt broke and his pants fell down and he chose to go commando that day too. My aunt had to bend down and pick them up for him and held them up as they finished their dance. This one's just terribly sad. My father's second wedding. Context. My father and mother divorced when I was a very young age. He met somebody new. I hate her. He had two boys with her over the course of a 20 plus years. Who I do not hate. They end up tying the knot. I put my differences aside for the day. Everyone's happy. The reception rolls around. And she makes a speech. And one of the lines was I just want to thank everyone for coming. Especially my family, my husband, and my kids, and a huge welcome to my new extended family who have been in for years anyway. Mum and dad. At this time, her family lets out an audible oop, and her sister shouts out an OP. Oh yeah and OP. To say the least. Her family know we don't get along, and this was looked down on for the rest of the reception. I found it humorous. Everyone else found it awkward. I was drunk, so I didn't care. I just sat there plotting my revenge, possibly murdering her with a grape in some fashion. We were at a wedding where the couple's dog was the ring bearer. Came time for him to give the rings and he couldn't be found. Turns out someone left him in the car and he actually died of overheating during the ceremony. So that was fricked. Jesus freaking Christ. Talk about a bad omen. I was the best man for my buddy. When it came time for speeches. The groom's stepdad got up and started subtlety bashing my buddy's real dad about how he's never around and that he, the stepdad, raised him and glad he did or he wouldn't have turned out to be such a good guy. My buddy leaned over to me and said get that freaking mic off him now. Went to a wedding of an extremely religious couple. About halfway through the ceremony, the bride starts washing her husband's feet like Jesus did for the disciples. I have no idea what it had to do with getting married, but it was very uncomfortable watching a woman bent down scrubbing her almost husband's feet in front of a silent crowd. Oh, this happened at my boyfriend's brother's wedding. They both washed each other's feet, and it was probably the longest and most awkward 7 minutes of my life. I was happy for them though, it was something that clearly meant a lot to them. I just didn't get it. I don't think I've ever been to a wedding that wasn't awkward. 1. My cousin's wedding. He decided to have his bachelor party the night before his wedding. Terrible idea. He showed up 30 minutes late to the ceremony. It was a 90 degree July day and an outdoor wedding. Everyone was miserable. They had written vows about looking into each other's eyes but he refused to take off his sunglasses because he was so hungover. And because he was hiding a black eye from a bar fight. They're still married 15 years later. Somehow. 2. My friend handed out programs at her wedding with a timeline of events, which is fine, but one of the events was first acceptable time to leave if you want to remain friends. She stationed an attendant in the parking lot to note anyone who left before that time. 3. Another friend had a 2 hour secular wedding ceremony. They did all of the unity traditions, candles, biting apples, tying sailors knots, and performed original love songs in alien costumes. There was no indication on the invitation or even in conversations with the couple that it would be this way. 4. At a friend's wedding, the DJ invited single women to come up for the book Atos. Then he says, Widows, you count as single? 2. Come on up several women started crying. The groom was the only survivor from his marines unit that was attacked in Afghanistan. And he had invited the wives and girlfriends of his fallen comrades. The DJ apparently didn't know that. Oops. How much can go wrong with one wedding? Let's count. 1. The bride was late to the ceremony because her hairdresser had more important clients that took priority to getting her to her wedding on time. People wondered if she got cold feet. 2. The photographer was really slow. As in, post-ceremony pictures took 90 minutes. Guests were already leaving the reception before the wedding party arrived. 3. The bride fell head over heels, not just in love, but face first while walking into the reception hall during the wedding party introductions. 4. The table centerpieces at the reception hall were lovely, that is until they all caught fire at exactly the same time during the reception. They're still happily married years later. The table centerpieces at the reception hall were lovely, that is until they all caught fire at exactly the same time during the reception. Metal. 
at my friend's second wedding, officiated by his sister, when announcing them as a couple she accidentally called his new wife by his ex-wife's name. Everyone fell silent, I considered lighting myself on fire for some relief. We were on a break. At a friend of an ex's wedding, the bride didn't look at her groom once during the ceremony. She looked up, around, at her parents, not once at him, even during their vows. She was there for the show, more than anything. They walked into the reception together holding hands, an entry to Pink's let's get this party started. She immediately dropped his hand and ran to her family. He was left dumbfounded. We were served champagne and asked to wait for a toast that never came. Peculiar things around the reception. Gorgeous venue and open bar. BTW. Like there only being photos of her in her dress and her ex-boyfriend dancing with her. Just bizarre. Rumor has it that she had a parental lock on the TV while they were dating. Saved herself for marriage and would regulate other things in his life. Like not letting him see his friends. This was 3 years ago. Still married, as far as I know, with a kiddo. Poor bastard. At my sister's wedding, the caterers shoved her off the steps about 10 minutes before the ceremony. She walked down the aisle with blood stains all over her dress. Bad timing. The sheriff where I grew up was married 4 times. While previewing the venue for his fourth wedding, he lost track of his fiance. He yelled his previous wife's name several times in front of other people. Don't feel bad for him. His first marriage was to a 14 year when he was 20. He started to target me by getting weirdly friendly when I was 9 and also targeted another young girl in town. Thank frick my mom noticed and tipped off the other girl's parents. I have an aunt who loves to dance. She will dance anywhere. She decided the most appropriate time and place to dance was while the bride was walking down the aisle. Because no one in the family can tolerate her she always sits next to me. She used my fork, swapped our dessert because she didn't like vanilla pudding. Then she tried to eat it. The best bit was during the speeches she burst into tears because she never found someone to love and she feels like she wasted her life. Made everyone feel bad for being pee at her. When, during the vows, the groom had written his own ad were heartfelt and genuine, and then the bride says ditto, then after that got pretty much no laughs. She went into this speech about how annoying she would be during the marriage, for example, I won't pick up the towels from the floor, I will always leave dirty dishes in the sink for you, etc. A marriage lasted 6 months. I was conducting a brass pipe organ ensemble for my friend. We were in the middle of a beautiful tune and the organist went to turn a page in her book. She accidentally knocked the book onto the keyboard and yelled frick at the same time the book crashed on the keys and let out a blast like a train horn. Only those closest to her actually heard her outburst. Unfortunately, that included the minister, the bride, and myself. The minister and bride were stunned and stared openly at the organist. I tried mightily to stifle laughter and eventually had to leave the room. The organist meekly picked up her book and kept playing. Oh man. There is nothing in the world that would keep me from laughing in this situation. The bride's father gave a speech and talked about how it was tough raising his daughter mostly by himself. He is divorced. This included talking about her getting her first period, as well dealing with the time her first boyfriend got mad at her because she wouldn't give him a blowjob. Awkward. Before the marriage ceremony my dad's then girlfriend came up to my brother and I and said, You are my sons now. You are in my family now. You. Are. My. Sons. It was very strange to hear someone command you to be their son. I've learned to stop questioning my dad's life decisions. Initiate maternal love and compassion. Probably not your average idea of awkward. But in this one family wedding the bride set the reception place on fire. When she threw the bouquet it got caught on a nearby ceiling fan and utterly destroyed. Then the plastic cloth thingy involving the flowers got caught on the mechanism or something and it almost immediately short circuited. Cue in slightly small fire that was not enough to burn the place to the ground, but enough to have to evacuate all the 300 plus guests. <laughs> Waiting for co-workers of mine. The DJ is introducing the bride and groom after the wedding party. They come in and the groom dances way ahead of the bride. She lags back and the groom starts freak dancing grinding on one of the bridesmaids. Awkward. Time for the toasts. 
the best man starts off by saying he has known them both for a few years. He then goes on to make sure everyone knows that he had sex with the bride before the groom. Time for the maid of honor. She starts off by saying something like no one ever thought these two would go through with getting married. Guess we will have to see how long before this ends. Five years later and they are still together. Lasting longer than I thought. The groom dances way ahead of the bride. She lags back and the groom starts freak dancing grinding on one of the bride's maids. Awkward. Time for the toasts. The best man starts off by saying he has known them both for a few years. He then goes on to make sure everyone knows that he had sex with the bride before the groom. What the frick? Well to do friends got married on a public beach. They had the financial and political clout to shut down the beach. But instead chose to only cordon off the seating area and pergola so normal beachgoers could enjoy a nice summer day at a respectful distance. Super trashy beachgoers flocked to gawk at the whole thing and photo them every possible camera angle. I'm talking old guys in speedos with sunburn pot bellies putting beach chairs so close they were touching the guest chairs. Someone groped a bridesmaid and was promptly arrested in the sands nearby while screaming. Another person decided to walk down the aisle and get close oops. Removed by a burly guest. There was lots of heckling. Though primarily of a political figure that was present. The reception was in a tent in a park nearby. It was amazing and tent means canvas palace in this instance. And interlopers crashed and were removed by the large contingent of plainclothes police in a non-stop stream. Seriously. Drunk beachgoers were just gathering and making runs at the tent. Trying to reach the bar. Then they loudly played dumb when caught. And got louder when forcibly removed. Luckily it was hard to hear things going on outside the tent. The bride and grooms were good sports and the wedding and reception were still great. But don't get married in public on the Jersey Shore. I was like what is going on and then you said Jersey Shore and I was like of course. Wife's sister's fourth. Or fifth. Wedding. They had enough self-awareness to low-key it, and in fact it was a surprise wedding. Everyone had been invited to a party, and the couple got married, without having told anyone it was going to happen. That wasn't the awkward part. The bride's brother took on the giving the bride away role, including a speech at the dinner table. Poor fella has always been a lightweight on booze, and got caught on the hop. His welcome to the family speech devolved into a drunken ramble about brothers-in-law coming and going for his many sisters, short marriages and family instability, getting close, but not quite at the fully awkward part. Suddenly, our hero locked eyes with me in the crowd. He realized I had actually managed to remain married to his baby sister for 20 years, and counting. The rest of the speech was therefore dedicated to what a great bill I was. But the rest seemed to just come and go, while he stood next to his newest bill. I've seen at least 150-200 weddings. Lots of uncomfortable sexual references in the toasts or uncomfortable mentions of previous relationships, but two stories stick out in my mind. 1. A Chinese woman and a very awkward white man were set to be married. I worked for the venue. So I was standing outside of the chapel waiting to open the doors for the bride to enter. When she turned to me and asked with a scared look in her eyes can you call me a cab. I responded by laughing right there in front of her thinking it was a joke. It was only when I realized I was the only one laughing that she was entirely serious. I opened the doors when I was instructed to because honestly. I didn't know what else to do. I saw the groom's face. He looked like he was having the best day of his life and excited to marry a woman he loved. She stopped halfway to him and began to cry. Not the I'm so happy crying. The holy crap what have I gotten myself into kind of crying. That was the last of the wedding ceremony I witnessed. I'm certain it didn't get any less uncomfortable for anyone else. The reception was equally as awkward. Throughout the night he was trying to dance with her to nearly every song. She would either reluctantly agree or dismiss him altogether. I couldn't understand why this guy couldn't tell she really didn't love him at all. Later on in the night I heard murmurings that she was only marrying him for a visa. TL. DR. Woman is clearly marrying a guy for a visa. He was obviously in love with her and she was obviously not in love with him. It was clear to seemingly everyone but him. 2. The father of the bride went up to give a toast right after the cake was cut. With about an hour and a half left of the reception. The bride and groom sat down to listen and as his toast reached the 10 minute mark they, along with everyone else, were getting frustrated that he was still speaking. 
He began with all of the usual wedding toast balls and went off on some completely unrelated tangent about himself. Many many times he said I better wrap this up, only to continue with something about himself, his recent golf game, how he wants to visit Antarctica, and other things that no one should ever talk about on the microphone at an event with a strict time limit that costs thousands of dollars. The bride, his freaking daughter, was motioning for him to stop, but he was having none of it. He only stopped 30 minutes later, grand total of 40 minutes, when he began a tangent about his recent bladder surgery and the bride burst into tears. TL. DR. Got to take a 40 minute cigarette break because the father of the bride wouldn't shut the heck up on the microphone. But in the middle of the annual town rodeo yeah, that's a thing. A bride in a spangly hat, rode to the middle of the ring, is that the term, to meet a groom, both on horseback. They then got married in front of the entire town 85% of whom were drunk and heckling. Have you ever been to a wedding where someone actually speaks up during the part where they ask if anyone has any reason the two should not e wed? If so, what happened? Not during the ceremony, but at the reception. The father of the bride was supposed to give a speech. He got up and all he said was don't worry, groom's name. When I got married my in-laws didn't like me either and sat down. You could hear a pin drop in the room. Worked at a videographer once. I turned up to the rehearsal, planned out shots, liased with the priest about how to get the best coverage while not disrupting anything, and arrived up two hours early on the day to get set up. The stills photographer rocked up five minutes after the bride on the day, asked if she could come in again so he could photograph it, and then at the or forever hold your peace part, kicked over his own tripod, smashed his camera and shouted frick. Yes, it was at my wedding. A friend's very sweet 5 year old little boy shouted no at the top of his voice. Then he went and hid at the back of the room while his mother died of embarrassment. We all laughed and carried on. Thankfully didn't count as a lawful objection. That's actually really adorable that you can tell the story of your objection at your wedding. The wedding was held at the bride's parents home. They thought they had every detail covered until the question was asked, and the officiant did his poignant pause. That's when the cuckoo clock decided to speak up. When the laughter finally faded, the ceremony continued, but the bride, the groom and the minister all chuckled through the rest of the ceremony. Best wedding ever. That's awesome. My dad, a somewhat former pastor, he still fills in for churches when their pastors are out, is the one who officiated my sister's wedding. Around Christmas time in our basement in front of the tree. You bet he had a hard time not crying lol. Sort of. My own wedding. My mill hated me. I married a southerner. I'm a damned Yankee. And we are of different religions. She did everything she could to stop her daughter from dating me including cutting off her tuition. Anyway, we decide to get married by a justice of the peace. He was retired and really cool. Former judge and minister. He asked questions and so we had to tell him about my witch of a mill. So the night of the rehearsal, just as we are wrapping up, this 85 year old job stands up and asks for everyone's attention. He said, these two kids love each other and are getting married tomorrow. If anyone has any objections they can speak now because they will not ruin the ceremony tomorrow. Then he proceeded to look coldly at Mill and said is there anything you want to say? Her face scrunched up like she was sucking on a lemon. You knew she had been planning on it all along and had just had all the wind taken out of her sails. She cowed down and just shook her head. He just looked at her and said I thought not. The phrase was never uttered during the wedding so all was well. B still hates me even now though her daughter and I have been married 27 years now. I'm so happy THST you have a long and successful marriage. That job is an absolute unit. I was at a wedding where the infant child of the couple getting married started making noises, denying the silence of acceptance. Could be worst. My sister's kid was a toddler when my sister married my niece's father. My niece went up to the unity candle, said pretty, hot and blew the candle out. Years later they got divorced. She kinda sounded like a Toy Story alien when saying it so it was a tiny bit adorable. Yes, it was terrible. Her adult son threw a fit gave a speech the whole 9 yards. It was more like an emotional breakdown tantrum. It was crazy. Not at the wedding, but at the reception. 
When my best friend got married her mom made a speech during the reception about how her daughter was a s and her son in law deserved better. I never wanted to punch somebody so much in my life. But the maid of honor punching the mother of the bride would just be the cherry on top of an already disastrous wedding. No. But when my cousin got married there was a lot of my family. Aunts and uncles mostly. But also her parents. That were very against it for a number of reasons and had said they would object when the time came. The time never came. The priest never asked. That part of the ceremony was completely skipped on purpose. 10 years later they are still married. He controls everything she does and she's not allowed to have a job or leave the house. She has a master's degree in early childhood education and development but they are on welfare because he only works when he can no longer collect unemployment. I worry about this on the flip side and what her family thinks of me. I am only a tech school grad currently on unemployment and she is big time doctor worked at both Yale and Cambridge. But she has gained rather serious agoraphobia and won't leave the bedroom so won't work and my current health stops me from working. Ill wager each side of the family has opposite opinions for each of us. At my wedding. My mom was the officiant so she didn't put it in because we assumed we'd have at least one person from his side say something. My in-laws still made sure to beg my now husband not to marry me literally minutes from when the wedding was supposed to start. After our honeymoon there were like 3 months that we lived with my in-laws. They would beg him to leave me, take full custody of our son, and just forget about me. In front of Emmy, they would tell him that I wasn't the girl they had planned for him very controlling people, or that there was someone that they thought would better fit into the family, etc. We've been together almost 4 years now and Phil will still say things like that in front of me. Middle waits until I'm not around to say things. Your husband needs to tell them to STF you. How's an almost? I found out 2 days ago that, 20 years ago, on our wedding day, I've been divorced for 7 years, my morally bankrupt XH started his cheating ways before we even started our 12 plus year marriage, which almost didn't even happen because of a wedding, crashing mistress, his groomsmen spent the 30 minutes before the ceremony stopping this girl and making sure he still wanted to go through with the wedding, knowing that his other girlfriend was about to crash it. So you're not friends with the groomsmen then, real answer, so awful. The question is intended to ask if anyone knows of a legal reason the wedding should not proceed. For example, if a bride or groom is already married to someone else, it was never meant to be taken as an open invitation to share opinions on the quality of their relationship. Exactly this. It's still very popular in the UK because it's illegal to be married and have another wedding before divorcing first. No. But our priest sat my family aside and lectured them against it because my wife and I were afraid dad or my sister would try something. Why would they try something? Yes, but it was scripted beforehand. Our friends decided that weddings are kinda boring and they wanted to have more fun with theirs. So when the officiant asked the question, a man stood up and started dramatically declaring his love for the bride, ran up to the altar, and begged her to choose him instead. He said he'd make all her dreams come true. My husband, the best man, stabbed the guy in the back with a stage dagger. He fell to the ground and the groomsmen dragged his limp body off to the side. And the service continued. It was epic. A friend of mine planned something very interesting for the wedding of a little friend of his. She was a little person and she was marrying a regular size dude. During the forever hold your peace party had another little person run in and say she was betraying her own kind. It was freaking epic and talked about it for years. I was a bridesmaid at a very catholic wedding where they actually asked this question. In 2000, there was a layer of tension among the family and guests because the couple was very young, had only known each other 6 months and the groom was clearly very gay. I myself witnessed him get a handy at a club from a drag queen. So when the question was asked the church got very quiet. It felt like everyone was hoping someone else would actually say something. At that moment the priest's microphone gave off a blaring feedback. Everyone laughed. I'm not a religious person but man that felt like a sign. Mate of mine went to a wedding where this question was asked. And someone stood up and said I do. You can't marry them. They already eloped and the bridal party laughed and confirmed it. They'd eloped a month earlier and were already married. Kinda sweet. This is low key kinda wholesome. 
I've shot over 400 weddings. Not once did they ask that question. That stupidity ended about the same time the airlines asked if you packed a bomb on board with you. I've only shot at 3 weddings and then they got restraining orders. First time at a wedding. I wasn't listening but the man said please raise and so I did. I'm the only one standing and the bride told me to sit the f down bean. When I was 10, my aunt got married. It was a really small ceremony, just very close family, and my brother, 8, and I were the ring bearers. Nobody told us when we were supposed to present the rings, so when they said the bit about speak now or forever remain silent, he figured that it was a good time to give the ring. He went and gave it to my aunt and for a second there was this really awkward silence and then we all just started laughing. We look back on it now and tease him about it a lot. This killed me. Holy frick that's hilarious. No, but one time somebody told the bride's parents that the groom had a secret girlfriend and was going along with this marriage for show. The bride's mother slapped the groom's mother on stage. Not the object to this marriage question but I heard of a local wedding where the church service was beautiful and the reception was near perfect. After the speeches to the bride and groom, the bride spoke in appreciation for all friends, family, and her new husband and their excitement for life together. The groom was last to speak and thanked everyone for being so good to them and then apologized that they had to be part of such deceit. He explained that the night before his bride was fricking his best man and that he was filing for annulment immediately. He also explained that he felt it best to proceed with the wedding while he made his final decision. He also suggested that the father of the bride, who paid significant amounts towards their wedding, hold both his daughter and the best man financially responsible. Then he walked out. Yay. My cousin got married back in 07 and her fiancé was sleeping around with one of the bridesmaids. She knew about it so. She said it out loud clearly so everyone could hear. The gusps and laughter were everywhere. She was so pee that she took off her shoes, threw them at him and the slag of a friend she had and took off in their honeymoon car. It was crazy. Yeah one of the groom's EXS spoke up after having a few cocktails, IDK why she was invited, and said that the bride should watch out because the groom has a very misshapen and strangely colored shaft and it doesn't function correctly, and fires off when it's not supposed to, they were saving themselves, so I guess the bride didn't know yet, it was awkward. That must have been incredibly weird to discuss after the wedding for the couple, even if the guest was lying it would have made for an uncomfortable conversation. Yes, at my own wedding. First off, I'm a lesbian and my wife's dad is really homophobic though he doesn't straight out admit it. At the wedding when they asked for objections, her dad stood up and said, Think about it, wife's name. She's in the navy, you'll rarely see her. Plus, she'll probably sleep with other girls while she's deployed. It was really upsetting but I still have an amazing and loving wife. Yes, unfortunately, my older brother and sister have always been super close. They're both much older than me, so I always felt like the third wheel in sibling stuff. When my sister started dating this guy she met at college seriously, I could tell something wasn't sitting right with my brother. I could hear him crying at night and he was missing work a whole lot. She was a big part of his life. I figured he was upset that she wouldn't moving back home after college. Eventually, it all blew over. But I could tell he still wasn't right. My sister's boyfriend eventually proposed to her and she said yes. Their wedding seemed like a fairy tale. Her fiancé was a software engineer for an investment firm. So he was loaded. We all thought it was going to be the wedding of the decade. On the day of the wedding. My brother is nowhere to be seen. My parents were starting to get concerned. But they kept quiet because they didn't want to ruin my sister's big day. Everything was absolutely perfect. As we sat and watched the 40 hour long catholic ceremony, we heard car come to a screeching halt in front of the church. Everyone turned their head towards the door waiting to hear a crash. A few moments later the church doors open and it's my brother. It's a big church, so I didn't have a good view. But I could hear people gasping. I knew some juicy crap was going down. As my brother got closer, I noticed why everyone was in such shock. He was completely naked and drunk. He stood in front of the front row and slurred eye object like they do in the movies. 
It was there that he broke down and admitted his love for our sister. He revealed that they had been sleeping together for several years. My jaw was on the floor at this point. My mom was hysterical and my dad held my mom with his eyes closed. My brother then went on to reveal that he had gotten my sister pregnant and that he was broken over her decision to abort. He said he still wanted to start a family with her and that her fiancé didn't deserve her. Several of my uncles dragged him away as he screamed about his love for my sister. Upon learning this news, the priest cancelled the ceremony and the wedding was called off. My sister's fiancé didn't say a word. He just left and we never saw him again. I still talk to my sister, but her and my brother have been excommunicated from the family. My parents even went as far as taking them off their wills. Please tell me you made this up. Actually yes. It was a same sex marriage where the parents and family of spouse one were incredibly homophobic and religious. They have been estranged for years due to bulls that they did about their child's sexuality. Somehow they found out about the wedding. None of them we invited, and showed up as a group mid-ceremony yelling about how they object to this union and it is ungodly for a man to marry a man. It ended with all of them being carried out by other guests and locking the door so they couldn't come in. The whole group stood outside the venue yell all night until we left. I hated upvoting this only due to the awfulness endured. I hope the couple is happy. Great grandma said she should have stayed home. Result was a moment of silence then everyone smiled. Most badass women I ever met. The closest I had was when my wife almost said no at our wedding. She hates being the center of attention. So she tried to crack a joke. Due to being uncomfortable. When asked. She had said we will And at that moment. One of my groomsmen was already planning our escape so he could take me to a bar and get me blackout drunk so I'd forget her. At the same time, the entire room went dead silent, as if they were fearing she'd say number. I'm sure she wasn't thinking about saying number. At my sister's wedding, their daughter, my beautiful goddaughter and niece, who was a bridesmaid and two years old, escaped from her wrangler and shouted, Mummy, no woo at the exact perfect moment. It was more to do with not being allowed to play with the wooden nativity scene at the front of the church than any deep-seated concerns about matrimony, but it was still beautiful timing. Everyone laughed and they got married with a toddler on one hip. Kinda same topic, but ended at a classy 5-star old Canadiana railway hotel. Smaller wedding banquet for a military wedding. Image. Lots of army men in formal uniforms. Bride and groom retire to their suite for the night in the same hotel after leaving parties to enjoy more music, dancing etc. They find their suite has been pranked. Furniture removed. Luggage taken. Bed short sheeted. Champagne emptied. Bathroom shaving gelled. Groom returns to banquet room. Furious. Takes mic and tells everyone off with lots of cursing. You ruined our wedding day. Take your gifts back and get the F out. Lights go up. DJ shuts down. Party over. I went to a wedding recently for one of my husband's friends. Nobody liked the relationship between the bride and groom, including both families and all the friends. It was super toxic and controlling and they managed to completely isolate themselves by hating on everyone. The wedding was mainly just immediate family and a few of the groom's childhood friends. It was the shortest wedding in history. When the time came where the minister asked if anyone would object to the marriage, IT was completely skipped. I think the couple knew that there were several people who would have objected so just decided not to have it. Also, they put the wedding on the day of a grand final so more than a few people had their phone out during the ceremony watching it. When they were announced man and wife, nobody clapped. Everyone left quietly and then at the reception, there was a betting pool for how long until they would get divorced. I haven't, but my brother spoke up at a wedding. The groom's jacket was folded up and under itself at the back and nobody noticed. My brother didn't want the photos to be ruined so at that point when asked if anyone had something to say my brother said fix your jacket I think he got some laughs and they fixed it before continuing. Yep. Yeah traditional roman catholic ceremony kind of an obscure part of the matrimonial law but if this happens then the priest will call upon the objector to validate the challenge if the objector is male this is done through a match of roman skull wrestling they will stand in a ring of rice with hands tied behind backs forehead to forehead 
and attempt to push their opponent out using only the forehead. The groom is typically the opponent but may call swap seers and choose a groomsman. The objector may then also call swap seers and choose any member of the congregation so long as they are baptized. If the objector is female then the contest is timed balancing of the priest's scepter on the right pinky. Similar swapsies rules apply. In my case the objector was female and lost the balancing contest by 2 full minutes and had apparently objected only because the bride's father had borrowed her rototilla and returned it with an empty gas tank and 2 bent tines. Ceremony resumed and all was good. OMG I'm Catholic. And while this is all total bulls, it is very funny. First of all, you don't get to just object to someone getting married. The actual line when used says if anyone has any lawful reason this couple can't be joined, speak now or forever hold your peace. Lawful means that they are brother and sister, or married already, or some other lawful reason. It's not just a blank check to say oh I don't approve, but in reality, this line is only used in movies and on TV, not real world. It's still used all the time at British weddings. Just tradition, really. Bigamy is illegal in the UK and the celebrant registrar can get an legal bother if they married a couple knowing it would be unlawful for them to be married. And the most important part of a wedding ceremony is the signing of the certificate at the end because that goes on the books and makes the marriage legally binding. Yes, turns out repeating that stupid family guy jokes genital warts isn't funny in real life and is just cringe and ruins the day for everyone. Also getting your crap kid to do it too won't do you any favors. OMG what? I walked out at a buddy's catholic wedding ceremony about 20 years ago. I did have something to say about it but I didn't want to ruin their day. They are still married. We were at a wedding of a good friend who was marrying someone that we weren't particularly fond of he's growing on us, albeit slowly, but she likes him, so shrug. They got to the point where they asked for objections. It got totally silent, and then my 4 month old let out the worst wail I've ever heard. It was all I could do to keep from laughing until I peed myself. My wife looked like she wanted to die. I was not at the wedding, it was way before I was born, but I did get to see the fallout from the event. When my aunt was married my great grandmother, who died before my birth, stood up at the point in the ceremony where they ask for reasons that the bride and groom should not be married and declared that she is not a smith. Pointing at my aunt, her own granddaughter, she is getting married under a false name. Apparently nobody had a clue what she was talking about and everybody assumed that she had started to suffer from dementia and so as she began to rant about my aunt's name not being smith some of the members of the family removed her from the church and the ceremony continued fast forward 50 or more years and my grandmother my aunt's mother is dying but a few weeks before she passed away she told my aunt that her father my grandfather was not her biological father and that she had married him after she had given birth to her my grandfather obviously knew the truth and so did my great grandparents but i presume everybody else just assumed that he was the father all along my grandmother refused however to tell her who her father was. When we dug a little into the family tree we uncovered my aunt's birth certificate. Sure enough she was registered under my grandmother maiden name and not my grandfather's name. At most non-movie weddings, they don't ask that question. I have been to around 20 including two of my own and have never heard it. I'm a church music director at a small church right outside a downtown area. We get a lot of homeless people that come in during church, or anytime the doors are open really. Once we had a guy who kept coming and sitting in the back while the wedding was getting set up. I asked him to leave twice and said we would call the police if he came back. We didn't see him for a while but he came back in after the wedding started. We didn't see him and no one spoke up. When the pastor asked if there were any objections the homeless guy said yee yee provide here he didn't stand or raise his hand. Just sat there. It really awkward and they tried to proceed. But he did it again. The bride's father turned beet red and looked ready to kick some butt. Two big guys in the back of the church stood up and asked the guy to leave. Which he did. Then the pastor laughed a little and told the photographers to erase that part. He said action. Does anyone object? Weird stuff like this always happens. We're pretty used to it now. Not yet, but at the OEI was at last week the friend performing the service asked is there any objections to this union? Speak now and get beaten by a group of people. 
This being said by one of the only people not in a costume or carrying a weapon. And while the best man dressed in a wedding dress and the bride's father dressed as Santa watched on. I was at a wedding in China where this happened. The pastor asked the question and many people spoke up. I nearly fell off my chair. The reason was that the question was asked like a normal Mandarin question. Literally have you or have you not any reason why this couple may not lawfully marry? And the correct negative response is to say, have not. In other circumstances it wouldn't have surprised me, but in this context I was expecting absolute silence. Yes, at my aunt's wedding my own mother spoke up. She said she knew it wouldn't work out. Three years later my aunt is divorced. When the priest asked if there were any objections, the entire church could hear the bride's father hiss. Think of something the priest paused, there was a long moment of silence, and then the ceremony resumed. Years later, the groom dumped the bride for one of his co-workers, and then her family rejoiced. No but at one wedding I was at the child of the couple who was only about 3 or 4 started getting restless waiting and pouting. The. She screamed. It's my wedding. Made the whole crowd laugh. Married people over it. What was the biggest waste of money at your wedding? The party favors. Some people have pens made or matchbooks. Little bottles of bubbles. We had little things of candy. Nobody took them. My sister and her husband gave out jars of homemade pickles. Everyone was so drunk near the end, so I ended up with several jars. It was great. My husband and I belong to different strong cultures. I'm Indian and he's Japanese. We got married twice because of this, once in India and once in Japan. In India we spent a bomb on everything, the clothing, the place, the food, and there were a huge bunch of people that I'd never even met in my life but that's how Indian weddings go. My family spent around $40,000. This is because it's them who insisted on this kind of wedding even though my husband and I didn't want it. It was tiring and stressful too. It went on for around 12 hours. Everyone probably had fun but us. In Japan, we went to this shrine on a hill with four of our friends and his family. Just mum, dad and sis. And we got married traditionally there. An hour or so. We then went a few kms down to a clearing and had a barbecue with cute wine next to a stream while overlooking the whole town at sunset. It was the best thing I had ever experienced and I really don't understand why we waste all that money on real weddings. Those Indian weddings are scarily expensive and big. My former flatmate was Indian and told me about how she had two Indian wedding ceremonies. One for the husband's family, one for hers. In total they had to take care of 600 plus guests and paid ridiculous amounts of money for all that. I think it was close to being six figured. Dang sentry pieces. So pointless but you have to have them for some reason. Hubby and I were fine with spending on a nice venue and good food wine and things people actually enjoy. But we went bare minimum for sentry pieces. Seriously. Has anyone ever left a wedding thinking wow those sentry pieces were really something? Had a small wedding and reception with 20 family members and close friends. The reception was at a restaurant in a back room. The menu got screwed up because they switched chefs between us signing a contract and the wedding. We decided to not have dessert, but it was served anyway. They also served carafes of wine that were not all finished, which is why we said no carafes. The bill was several hundred dollars more than we expected. We just wanted to have a fun time so we just let it slide. Chair covers. 3 pounds and 50 pence each seems reasonable. Then for some reason you need 250 chairs for 180 guests. 875 pounds. Would you like someone to dress the chairs? Always seems to total 1000 pounds. To rent chair covers. NB. I always make sure to comment when I see chair covers now. Because I know. I know. This is one thing my wife was adamant that she did not want at the wedding. I don't have any particular feelings about chair covers one way or the other, but I'm glad to know we dodged a thousand pound bullet. Just got engaged, and trying to figure out how to budget for a wedding is insane. Everything costs way too freaking much. Hurts more because we're paying for it ourselves. Married 18 years. The photographer sucked. After the first year of marriage, I never looked at the pictures again. 
One thing we did right, though, was only have wine and beer because I come from heavy drinkers and there was no way I was paying for everyone to get all fricked up and fight. Photographer sucked. 9 times out of 10 that's because the wedding couple went for the cheapest photographer possible. My wife and I were content taking a cab from our wedding venue to the hotel. My Phil rented a $650 stretch limo for a 5 mile ride. I remember renting a limo last minute. We had been looking at renting a Harley trike but was more expensive and complicated than we thought it would be. I paid less than $300 and it fit the whole wedding party and photographer took us to where we had our photos taken and then onto the reception. It was great. We tried to keep costs down so did not invite any cousins to the wedding. My aunt asked that we made an exception for her daughter and her partner as it would be a good opportunity for his to meet some of her family. I gave in. I did not speak with my cousin or her partner. Her parents said hello in passing and that was it. They gave one gift between the four of them and it was a single duvet cover with no pillowcase. To cap it all, I did not get an invitation to their wedding. I got married recently and we had a mix of going the whole hog and cheaping out. My suit was an off the peg. Her dress wasn't a wedding dress, just a nice dress that looked somewhat bridal. We just bought a bunch of big cakes from a cake shop, not a proper wedding cake, so we saved thousands. However, we spent fat stacks on venue, a sort of club bar event place in a disused Victorian foundry, catering, amazing three courses, coffee, quite a lot of free drink, and entertainment DJ, band, photo booth, table magician, face painting. So it still ended up costing a lot of money, regarding the things we prioritized on. No ragrets, as a day night, fun wise, it was pretty freaking great. I know nobody would say your wedding was crap but the effusiveness of the comments about how fun people thought it was was amazing. A lot of lovely comments, even from acquaintance obligation guests about how much they enjoyed everything. If you don't have much money to spend, it doesn't matter, our actual legal wedding was the registry office with our parents and going for lunch on a different day and it was lovely, but if you do then you can make it a pretty freaking cool party. The thing we cheaped on and I regret is photographer. She was a family friend and had studied photography but wasn't a pro, so maybe a risk, but was pretty rubbish and all the photos made it look like we were stressed and hated each other. Luckily my brother is a hobby photographer with some talent and took a load of nice ones. The biggest waste? I really don't know. I'm kind of glad we splurged on the fun stuff. We did order far too much evening food but I made goddamn sure that I took it all home in a big box when they tried to make out like it had to go in the bin. We went pretty all in on our wedding, saved for a few years, paid for it all ourselves. Wedding was at a ranch, had pony rides for the kids, a kids buffet on top of the regular food, 130 guests, all the usual things. Spent about 25k if you include dress, rings and whatnot. 5 years later so far, still one of the best days of our lives, would do it all exactly the same, save for maybe not inviting the people I now know didn't show up. For me it was the cake, but my husband wanted to splurge on that as we saved so much elsewhere. A 250 pounds for a two tier, lopsided cake that she decorated terribly compared to what we talked about, which wasn't even that complicated. Just a simple white buttercream iced cake with small dot details. I was really disappointed and to make it worse, we could have gotten a much better version of the cake for 80 pounds. From the vendor I originally wanted to go with, at least it tasted alright. My last wedding cost $900, and I ended up winning $700 in Las Vegas during the honeymoon, so it really only cost $200. I can't complain about anything. We went to the JP and just had a handful of people there. We then went back to our house and had lunch with everyone. The biggest waste was probably the whole pitcher of unsweet iced tea I made for my dad and he didn't drink any of it, even though he insisted that was what he wanted. I for sure wasn't going to drink it because I'm pure southerner and only drink my iced tea sweet. I didn't pay for anything, but her ring, and I am still with her. For divorced guys, I would think men would say her ring. Going through my second divorce now, I got the ring back both times, 
The first time I was able to sell it for pretty close to what I paid for it. The second one I haven't done anything with yet but most likely will do the same. Or maybe we'll hold on to it and use the stone in another ring. Should I ever decided to do something stupid again? We had a pretty restrained ceremony and reception. I think my mum spent more money on her shoes than the ceremony as a whole. Everything but the certificate itself. Original plan was to have my old roommate bake the cake and have a party in the park. My mom wasn't having that and paid for a ceremony and two receptions. Maybe three of my friends were there between the two receptions. And I didn't know even a quarter of the people on the guest list. I smiled, said the polite things, and would not do it that way again if I could do it over. Comma I didn't know even a quarter of the people on the guest list. My wedding ended up being a family reunion for older folks. My friends were there too but I was amazed with the amount of distant relatives and old friends my parents had. My dress. Granted I didn't pay for it, my mum did. But it was so unnecessarily expensive I wish I'd chosen something cheaper. Plus I paid an extra grand for alterations. Over a year later I still think about it. I haven't even had it cleaned and preserved because it would cost so much. So it hangs in its bag in our house with dirt on the bottom. Probably the biggest guilt of my life RN. Everything else was wonderful though. We saved money where we could and ended up with an awesome wedding. If having paid a lot of money for a gorgeous wedding dress is the biggest guilt you have in life, you have a pretty awesome life redditor. Don't feel guilty and enjoy it. It really depends on your view of what important. But if you're only interested in being actually married, then almost everything. Suit rental. Wedding dress. Rings. Reception etc. It's all a big nothing really. I'm married, and just wanted to be married. I don't regret spending a lot of money on everything. But I would have been equally as happy getting married in our local registrar's office. And then saying to everybody when meeting up in this bar. Everybody come here. Or don't it's your choice. That would have cost less than 500 pounds easily I believe. We did ours on the cheap and it still cost close to 10k. Which for us is a huge amount of money. My personal wedding ring costs 25 pounds. Plain titanium band. And it means everything to me. It doesn't matter if things cost one pound or one million pounds it's what it means to you. Again, not a knock on people who want to spend the money and have a big day. Good on you, honestly. But if you really don't mind all that much, just get married and be happy. We had a private ceremony and barely spent anything. If I had to pick it would be all the alcohol we drank while bar hopping after. We eloped and I insisted on no frills. Went to Vegas. Bought rings at a pawn shop right before the ceremony. It was a total blast and we're about to celebrate 8 years of marriage. I understand why people have big weddings but I will never regret the way we did it. That sounds like so much fun. That's what I want. Wife flew in all her friends and family to San Francisco from Japan. Business class. 14 people. I asked why can't you just fly them economy. She was appalled that I even asked. Oh well money. Yeah I would have offered to pay for the ticket and if they wanted to upgrade their seats then so be it. I can understand not wanting to fly economy all that way though. I just did a west coast to east coast and back again trip for my friend's wedding. I'm 6 2 inches and the 5 hours one way in economy was the total sick. Can't imagine doing it all the way from Japan and back lol. We did a really simple backyard BBQ wedding. Been together 10 years. Not a whole lot of pomp needed. We bought a bunch of beer and maybe a third of it was light cheap beer. No one drunk it so we were left with a bathtub of PBR. Not the worst thing but it took me 3 months to drink it all. One thing I'm glad we didn't spend money on was a videographer. It was briefly discussed but we never did it because the photographer was expensive enough as it was. And in retrospect, I think that was a good choice because I know we'd never watch the video. The pictures are enough. If you want a good, well put together wedding with reliable vendors, it's gonna cost money. I'm not sure on what the biggest expense was for mine that we could have cut. DJ was $1,300. Photographer was $2k, and the country club was $50 head for dinner, including the ceremony. If I had to pick, maybe wedding cake no? We bought 3 sheet cakes from Sam's club and people devoured them and said they were phenomenal. Saved us hundreds. Good call on the cake. 
We had a family friend make our wedding cake as their wedding gift but I knew there wouldn't be enough for everyone so I ordered cupcakes from our local grocery store, a chain store, simple chocolate and vanilla and everyone loved it. My entire first wedding, tbh, second wedding, no money was wasted, we spent about $2000 and didn't tell our guests it was our wedding, our combined age that year equaled 69, and the 1st of April is 2 days after her day, and 2 days before mine, so we threw a joint day party for our 69th birthday on April Fool's Day, had it at a good local restaurant out on their patio, provided our own wine and beer. Walked in and surprised everyone by getting hitched by our friend who is a pastor. No DJ or band, just a dope playlist, worth every penny. Our venue was really good, we got a great deal on the food and all the extras at cocktail hour, sushi bar, mashed potato bar, infused vodka, and so on. And it was only $100 pp, which, in North New Jersey, is quite the steal for the quality. I'd say the biggest waste of money, and time, was the custom favors I made. Jesus it took forever and they were adorable, but I can't help but think it would have been a thousand times less stressful if I'd just bought some cheap, cliche favors. For us it was the venue itself. Originally we planned on 100 people, figured at least 80 would make it, only 60 made it, so our venue seemed so huge and empty when it really shouldn't have felt that way. Uh, yes. I stopped myself from inviting some people because I have a small guest list and then some did not even show up or cancelled last minute so rude. I end up having a smaller wedding, around 8100, and felt a little sad. <laughs> to be honest I think it was my wife's tiara. Not because it was expensive, like $5 to $7, but because she forgot it in the car when we went to the courthouse. We woke up one morning and decided that that was going to be the day. We called our parents and told them that we were getting married and that we would call them later when the judge signed our waiver to see if a different judge would marry us. After we got the license and the waiver we went to buy her a dress and while we were shopping she found a tiara. Wasn't even that pretty, and I just told her to take it if she wanted I didn't care what she wore. We made an appointment with the court to actually get married and we took the judge's last sport for the day. That was a good day. The wedding. It wasn't worth the drama and it didn't even feel like my wedding. We didn't pay for it but I would have preferred to elope and use the wedding funds towards a nice honeymoon and pay off our various debts. The favors gifts keep it simple. Flowers. Like 90% of them went in the trash that night. Like $1000 sign plus. Rentals. Silverware. By the time you add it all up you could have purchased half decent sets at Walmart and sold kept donated them. Tablecloths. Buy some they are cheap and you can use them for years. When it comes to rentals keep this in mind. Even if it costs more you may be able to save some money if you buy it then resell it. Dress. Rings. You save a lot of money if you opt for silver for your information. Diamonds are actually cheap in reasonable size if you don't mind non top notch clarity. It doesn't directly answer the question but I just want to be one voice defending the big wedding. It's not for everyone. And if you can't afford it, I would never in a million years advise you to stretch yourself to make it happen. But I loved every moment of our wedding. It was pretty expensive. But we didn't short ourselves on any of the vendors or experiences we wanted and it was honestly one of the most fun evenings I've had. We were featured in a magazine which kind of validated the hard work and kept the buzz alive a little longer. I think there are some aspects that you either go big or go home. More with the sentiment of buy it nice or buy it twice, without the option of buying it a second time, like food or photographer. For those about to or thinking of embarking on this journey, if you don't have the funds to make it easy and pleasant this will be one of the worst experiences of your life. Almost guaranteed. Family crap always comes up. You find out how dumb and lazy your friends and family can be, and making those issues less stressful costs money. Having to pay a mandatory donation for the services of the church's wedding planner. She probably took a total of about 5 minutes to schedule the ceremony, and that was it. Also, the photographer. Service wasn't great. Photos turned out okay, but we didn't even get prints of all the proofs. Yeah, a lot of things in a way. I wanted to elope or have a tiny registry office ceremony. 
My husband wanted a wedding and his family did give us quite a lot of money towards it, so that's what we ended up doing. We overfed our guests so a lot of food didn't get eaten. I still have most of our wedding cake in the freezer. I could have gotten a much smaller one. I got my dress for around 700 pounds including alterations and I did love it, but now that lives in a closet. I got caught up in the enthusiasm of the bridal store when I was planning a wedding by myself and no else seemed to care. Though I did at least buy my veil from Amazon. 10 pounds. Instead of a bridal store. 100 pounds. The thing is for a big wedding with lots of guests, I wouldn't have done it any differently. But I would have definitely considered just a small ceremony with immediate family and worked out how to celebrate with everyone else later. I didn't get to spend any quality time with guests anyway because I was constantly rushing between them. So why invite them all? That was with just 65 guests. I can't imagine what it's like with these huge 100 plus person weddings. My wedding ring because I hate the feeling of jewelry and have never worn it. Rest of the wedding was cheap though, about $1000 for everything. We bought a $15 dress from Walmart. We don't need debt to be the first thing we do together as a married couple. Of course she still only wore it once cause it got stained pretty bad after the honeymoon he. $30 wedding rings total. Tattoos. However much it cost for a wedding license. Parents paid to rent tables. Chairs and a tent. 500. Had a wonderful backyard wedding in a clearing in the woods. So biggest cost would be the two kids we had before marriage lol. We all know what you really meant. No need to hide it. My shoes. I spent the day before the wedding dragging him to every shoe store on Maui. Took them off after we got to the beach for the ceremony. We eloped. Sunset on the beach on Maui. Hired an amazing wedding coordinator who did all the work. We brought our clothes and rings. She did the rest. He's still mad about those dang shoes. Still married 23 years later. I have her number for any of you that are sick of the planning. Remember your shoes. The decorations. We had special seats for us but were uncomfortable. We sit with our friends. Also my wife panicked last minute with the guest lists and order another 30 seats that went unused. The free help I got from my mom amd her useless friends. The venue was a friend of a friend's ranch. They messed up my chocolate fountain and complained about everything. The photographer friend was downing beers while snapping pics of us. And the supposed wedding planner fainted in the 85 degree heat. Then they made us all clean up the venue and put away chairs and tables at the end of the night. We were going to do that the next day. Upgrading the decorations. They show them to you side by side so you see how the cheap ones look crap but the people at the wedding only get to see the ones you choose and have nothing to compare it to. Same reason shops put cheap TVS next to the expensive ones. My dress. It was on sale for maybe $700. I should have waited and gotten one of these pretty $100 to $150 dresses that I keep seeing. You only wear it once. And I didn't pay for them. But I would have had different bridesmaids dresses. Instead of them forced all the same I should have asked them to buy a sundress in my wedding color. Navy. Send a picture for approval so no duplicates or trashy choices. My wife and I are big footies. And our wedding had food stations all around it. Think of it like a buffet. Except instead of one table there's several. Scattered in literally every corner of the room except near the dance floor. Everyone told us we wouldn't get to eat. But we had a truly awesome wedding planner and she made sure both my wife and I got to try every single thing. Except the freaking pasta bar. We had a custom pasta bar set up, where you could pick your pasta, sauce, s, and add-ons, i.e. chicken, olives, spinach, etc. And a dude would cook it all up in a pan. A pasta version of an omelette station. When our wedding planner made our plates, the line was already long for the pasta bar. And she also didn't know what we wanted. So she said she'd get us something later. And we were fine with that. Except I never got a chance to go over to the pasta bar and order my pasta. I've been married for nearly 4 years now. And I'm still sad about it. The food was outstanding. The wedding was an absolute blast. And in general that's one of the best days of my life. But forever. I'll always wonder about the chicken carbonara with black olives that never was. Just the tag wedding on any item or service increases the price x10. 
I would never do a wedding again. We went to the justice of the peace and then did a ceremony 3 months later. We should have just had a big barbecue and saved ourselves a lot of money and undue stress. There was so much money wasted on things that are meaningless even a few months down the line. I don't think we really wasted any money. We didn't get anything we didn't want to. We used or enjoyed everything we did get. We didn't pay an outrageous price for anything. We came in under our budget. Nope. Everything was pretty much perfect. Actually one thing we spent money on that I wasn't as sure about at first was the bonfire. They said we could pay to have a bonfire set up after the reception was over for people to hang out at and have fun and all that. Turned out to be a real blast that all our guests enjoyed. I wasn't even there for that long because my wife and I were so tired. But I'm so happy everyone else got so much out of it. A lot of people say unequivocally that all weddings are a waste of money or that a dress is a waste of money or whatever. As long as you want it. And can afford it. I don't think it's a waste. Do what you want because it's what you want. My wife wanted a dress so we got a dress. But we didn't spend thousands of dollars of it. I wanted to look dang good in a suit so we rented some nice ones. We were also smart and picked a place that was really reasonably priced. Came with a lot of stuff included at the price. And handled a lot of the organization and coordination for us. Less stress is priceless. It's not a waste if you enjoyed it and paid a fair price for it. Nothing about my wedding was a waste of money. Got married at a sandals resort in Jamaica. We spent approx $3,500 including airfare. One week there. All inclusive. Flowers. Wedding cake. Video. Photographer. Reception. Music. Etc. They even gave us free Royal Dalton China. The video and photos were excellent quality. The photographer gave us all the negatives. Before digital. LOL. So that we could have copies made. 14 of our family members flew out there. Including my 88 year old grandmother. And everyone had a blast. 18 years later and my mom still comments on how that was the best wedding she'd been to. T old wedding DJ checking in. The most important expense for any wedding is the photographer. Period. End of discussion. It's not the venue. It's not the food. It's not the booze. It's not the time of year. It's not even the dress which I know is blasphemy to a lot of women. It's the photographer. If you cheap out on this, you will regret it. Weddings last one day. The memory of that day will eventually fade as well. Good photos last a lifetime. Nothing is more important than finding a photographer with actual talent who has actually done weddings before. Your aunt's best friend with who got a nice DSLR camera for Christmas and who likes to take photos is not a freaking wedding photographer and you will get trash photos. Wedding photography is as much about people wrangling and paying attention to what is going on as it is the ability to frame a photo and press a button. That takes people skills and a certain eye for details. Once you set a date, and think you have found an acceptable venue for that date, the very next thing you do is lock down a photographer. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.